This morning we want to get started by showing how to do it yourself with paint. And these projects are ones in fact that um, you can do yourself. And um, I learned about this paint, it seems like uh, probably about six months ago. It's called Chuck Paint, specifically it's Annie Sloan. So I decided to put it to the test in a DIY project with a very small table. I want to take a, a look at what it looked like before. When we started this project, it was just a, oh, I think it was about 70 bucks this, this table was. We picked it up and it had, you know, just really basic knobs on it, nothing too exciting. But what I thought was really cool about it was kind of the, the potential, the lines on it had three pull-out drawers and from the top, if you take a look at this next picture, you're going to see that, you know, this, this, well, this is another project that we're working on too and this was an old, um, obviously, window pane and I didn't know what to do with it, but I liked it because it was old and cool and I feel like it was probably from like the 40s. Um, so I said, what the heck, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to team up with Patty Leone, the owner of Green Table Gifts in Chandler an expert in transforming furniture with this chalk paint. So we welcome you to the show. Thank in you, these Catherine. pictures, you can see that we had our work cut out for us. We did, but you know, no task is too large for Annie Sloan chalk paint. It really takes the ordinary objects and makes them extraordinary. And we're going to take it a step further today and add some typography on top of it, which is so popular right now. Um, so you can do this with any piece. It can be that old window you found. It could be a chest of drawers you have already. Anything you've got, we can tackle it. Okay, so we have to show this table. So if you look right here in the front, this is that table that we saw in the picture. And what we've done is if you look on the side, you're going to see some typography that's um, hand, um, hand stenciled, if you will. And we're going to learn how to do that. Um, that's just a graphic that you found online. Online. You can search for copyright free graphics. You can download or copy off um, some old vintage labels that you might already own or make your own on Word or Photoshop or anything like that. So you can really do any image that you want um, and we'll show you how we do that next. But first we're going to do the distressing. Okay. And that's what gives this piece a little bit of patina. You can see some of the other samples we have here have that age old feel to them. It has something that has a little age of the nooks and crannies in there. It or looks like it just got kind of worn and dirty on it there. It was. Maybe it was pulled out of a basement somewhere in the Midwest or maybe even in France. You never know. Some of them even, even have the crackle on there where the years of heat and cold has made the paint distress. We can make that look in just a second with a new piece here. Okay. And one of the amazing things with Annie Sloan chalk paint is that it's water-based and eco-friendly. You can paint indoors, so that's good news going into Arizona hot weather here. Oh, okay, so it's not stinky. It it's not going to mess up, you know, your It is your not. House. No, it is certified low VHOC, so I very rarely ever smell anything when I open a can. We paint in store all the time, and in fact, you'll probably see me in the store doing it day to day, and you At won't even know. A couple times I've been in there, she's <laughs> been doing projects. So we're trying to achieve what you've done on the side of this, which is kind of put that on there, but on the bottom we had the red, then you put a pink on top. We did. We had um, two layers of Annie Sloan chalk paint on there. Now this could be a secondary layer. So what we're going to show you today, it's not a second paint layer. It's actually going to be just the cabinet finish here that we're doing. Okay. And because this is water-based, you can take a wet rag and a sponge and oh, it's really coming off. work on there. And see how we're starting to get that distressed look Oh, on can there. I try? You sure can. I want to see how hard you have to really do it. This like. is a terry cloth sponge that we have here. So it's got a little bit of nib and texture to it. And that's going to help help in that process. The edges are natural wear spots too, so that's always a great place to do it. And the thicker you apply your paint, the more you're going to put a little bit of elbow grease, but it can be a really nice natural look to it. Oh, that's um, so sandpaper cool. is a popular technique as well, and that's something you can definitely use. But I really like using this wet distress technique, and that's unique to this paint line. It's something a little bit wow. different than the norm, <gasps> and it's a little bit softer than a normal sandpaper. So once you've gotten the desired patina that you want, the next we want to do is find your graphic. So okay. then what we've done here with the sample that we've done is find our graphic online. It's an old French label, something to do with medical supplies in there and bandages is what this one was from. Um, but it, nonetheless, it looks great. So we printed it off on Word and then we are going to get that transferred on. So on the so back side, okay. here's the trick. You're going to rub this chalk, pastel chalk, all the way on the back okay. and cover it from top to bottom there. Okay, top to bottom. And then you're going to secure it onto the spot in your decorative piece, whether it be a door, whether it be your cabinet. 
You want to line it up where you want and just tape it in place. Regular scotch tape is fine. You don't need to do anything fancy with painter's tape or anything like that. So we're just going to adhere it on there. And then here's the easy part. You're just tracing, taking a ballpoint oh, pen okay. and just outlining. You don't need to worry about filling it in or doing anything like that because we will have our magic weapon here. Which is a if, Sharpie pen. If, it, if you're <laughs> off a little bit, does it matter? You know what? No, the chalk will come off afterwards. So you can fill it back in with the pen and kind of make it your own. So sometimes just the guide and the outline of the letters, you want to kind of flourish it a little bit more. You can do your own, but that gives you that guide to make sure it stays in a straight line. Um, and you could be really exact with this and, and you know line it all up and level it. But we are going for that natural look. Maybe this came off of an old crate somewhere in France. So we want a little bit of age, a little bit of patina and that's what's going to make it unique. Okay. So as you can see, we've gone through and we have outlined everything here and I've taken the liberty to go ahead and start some of it with a Sharpie marker and you go in and just trace it on out. Now the trick with the Sharpies is that you do want to keep a cloth or a paper towel nearby and you want to kind of wipe off the excess sometimes because those pens can get gummed up. So just keep a little cloth. I use our little cheesecloth here that kind of takes off any of the extra and it does not have to be a perfect copy because we're going to go back and distress it further. So even just the faint outline of this it's is going to be, be acceptable and I keep a couple arsenal in there to switch out pens. So switch as one out. wears down you can wear, go into another one. Um, that's the biggest tip is definitely keep a couple extra pens on hand. You want to switch them out and do different widths. You want small, medium, and wide. You want a little bit of everything. Okay. And again, there's no rules. So it doesn't have to be perfect because what we're going to do next is give even more patina. So this is all about giving it that feel uh, that it came from you know, somewhere with a okay. story and a past. And this is going to stand differently. So we had already gone through and done our wet distress. Now here's another technique with sandpaper, just okay. regular 220 grit sandpaper. And you're going to go over this. And you're going to get it light. And you're going to see kind of some chalky dust kind of uh -huh. coming through. That's OK. We can just wipe that all off. Oh, when look at that. Seal it all up. It's going to be going. Well, I'm going to let you continue to work on this. Then we're going to kind of um, have people stick around. So coming up at 930, we're actually going to learn another technique using wax. And we're going to take this just a little bit further so that you can see how it goes to that. So lots of fun stuff on this DIY week here. I'm super glad that I just learned that because I found my new love.